Hey, this is Daniel O'Connor of the Bratton O'Connor Law Firm. Today I'm talking about four common mistakes people make when naming life insurance beneficiaries. Um, there's an article on our blog article on our website that we've just published that goes into more detail on this, but I thought this was important enough that I wanted to cover it in a video in case that's the medium um, that you follow us on. So, the first mistake is failing to name a beneficiary. And hopefully you haven't done this if you have life insurance, but you'd be surprised how often this happens. What happens when you fail to name a beneficiary? Well, your estate is the, becomes entitled to the money if you die, the money that's paid out uh, as insurance. Um, so what's wrong with your estate being the beneficiary? Well, your estate is paid to your creditors the people you owe money to before it's paid to your heirs or to your beneficiaries under your will. That's the problem with probate estates. So for example, let's just say the cause of your death was an auto accident that was your fault. Well, the people who are injured or killed or, or, the, or their families are gonna sue your estate to recover money. And um, let's just say it's a million dollar case and you have a million dollar insurance policy. Well, if, they, if your insurance policy is paying your estate, you've just exposed that whole amount to this creditor. That's not good. If you had named a an, uh, an individual, a good in, an individual that we would recommend you nominating, um, they would get the money free of your estate and wouldn't have to go through court to get the money or possibly lose it to a creditor. So that's a big mistake you should avoid. The second one is uh, forgetting to update beneficiaries. And I've got a lot of stories I could tell about people who forget to update beneficiaries, um, but it wouldn't be very funny for the person who's um, hurt by that. So for example, let's say you name your spouse as a beneficiary, you get divorced, you forget to update that, and your ex-spouse um, gets your million, million dollar insurance and not your new spouse. That's bad. Don't do that. That can be really harmful. Um, so always update your beneficiaries. Part of my practice and the way I've developed over the last couple of years is to try to encourage people to get on maintenance plans with me if I've done their estate plan so that we can hold them accountable. Um, that only happens if you work with an attorney and you have an attorney that, that stays involved in your affairs and can help keep things updated. Um, you may have a financial advisor that helps with this. But anyway, hold yourself accountable or, or if you're not the type of person that's good at updating things, uh, work hard enough that you can pay someone else to do it. Because you know, by failing to update beneficiaries, you're hurting somebody. The third, um, the third mistake I'm gonna talk about is one that I, I've talked about before and I'll talk about again, naming a minor as the beneficiary of your life insurance, naming a child. Um, here's the problem in Georgia, uh, a child under 18 cannot even hold that money. So if you named your child as a beneficiary or as the backup to your spouse, uh, your child is gonna get this life insurance money, but they're not really gonna get it because a court, someone's gonna have to go petition a court to appoint a conservator to represent your child. And then that conservator will hold the money until your child turns 18 and will have a lot of strings and will have to answer to a court on how to spend the money. And then when your child's 18, they're just gonna get whatever's left over free of uh, any kind of strings at all. And we all know that 18 year olds are not exactly uh, money experts. Most 25 year olds are not money experts. Um, so that money is going to be lost. It's not going to serve the purpose you want it. I recommend using revocable living trust as beneficiaries for life insurance for this very reason, because you can ensure that the insurance money, which you probably intended to replace your income or your resources to raise your children or to help your spouse in the same way you would have if you lived, a living trust can do this. When you just name a child or their guardian as a beneficiary, then you've um, put all that at risk. And if you name, and what I've seen some people do is name an adult as the beneficiary 
expecting that they'll help the kid. Well, they're under no obligation to do that. If that beneficiary has liens or debts or something like that against them or a spouse is ready to get a divorce, you've just put all that money at risk. Very dangerous. And finally, the fourth mistake is listing a special needs person as a beneficiary. What do I mean by a special needs beneficiary? I mean someone who's disabled or something and they qualify for some kind of government benefit to help them. Those kind of benefits can be um, essential. However, if they receive an inheritance that could, uh, or a big sum of money, that can disqualify them from benefits. Um, so you should never name somebody who has special needs or is likely to be a special needs person as a direct beneficiary on life insurance. However, life insurance is spectacular for people with special needs if you do it the right way. You need to set up a trust. In most cases, if you have a special needs person, uh, a trust specifically for a special needs person, um, these are called special needs trusts. And these are trusts, there's nothing illegal about it, it's specifically allowed by the government. Special needs trusts are, are trusts that allow money that someone's inherited in trust to supplement any government benefits they may receive. That way they don't have to spend all their money to qualify for the benefits that they need. And uh, you can, through a special needs trust, you can make sure that your loved one gets the care that they need and without compromising their income. So never ever name someone with special needs as a life insurance beneficiary. See an attorney, set up a special needs trust, and um, you know make sure they're cared for. So those are four mistakes people make. Um, at our law firm, as part of our estate planning, we get into the details. What I've said is very general and, and doesn't get into your situation, so please don't take any of it as legal advice. But you should get legal advice. If you've got insurance and you've got people you love, you should get legal advice on the best way to make sure that your money, your insurance, cares and, take, and is used in the way you wanted uh, for the people you love.